Today's the day that a lot of people have been waiting for. The Osmo Action 5 Pro is here and there are a few things that I'm sure you're eager to know about. And there's one particular feature that I think will make quite a big difference to a lot of people because it was one of those things that was asked quite a lot about with the Osmo Action 4. So more on that a little bit later. So in this video, I'm gonna share eight of the main features and specs that are worth knowing about, especially if you're a vlogger. And it's basically just to try and help you decide if you wanna pick up the Osmo Action 5 Pro for yourself. So the design of the camera is basically the same as the Action 3 and the Action 4, with a few minor differences. One of which being the OLED touchscreen display on the front and the rear of the camera, which allows the touchscreen to just be seen even better on a bright sunny day. There are a couple of other differences too, which you can see in my comparison video with the Osmo Action 5 Pro and the Osmo Action 4, and I've dropped a link in the description to that so you can check it out. There's also a new feature which I quite like called the Always On Display and the screen is triggered in one of two ways. The first being when you set to have the screen off when you're recording. So when you hit record, depending on the delay that you've set, the screen will switch to one of the styles that you've chosen. The other way that it's triggered is if you haven't touched the screen in a little while. And at this point, it will show you a little summary of a few details to do with the camera. And I quite like it. It's quite a nice little touch. There are also now two storage options. So the Action 5 Pro takes on the same storage idea as the Action 2 in that it now has internal storage. The Action 5 Pro also has an SD card slot like the Action 3 and the Action 4. So this internal storage is pretty great for times when you forget your SD card or you've just filled it up and you don't have any room and you don't want to delete anything. The limit is 47 gig, which should be enough for most vloggers for a full day of filming. I've done this and I've only used maybe a third of the storage. So it's gonna do you for a full day of filming, in most scenarios anyway. Even though the sensor size remains the same as the Action 4 at 1 over 1.3 inches, there is an update to the sensor as it has enhanced dynamic range of up to 13.5 stops. So it should do better to level out the exposure in high contrast situations. I don't know if you can see this though, but in some situations, I've noticed that there's like a glow around the edges of some objects, mainly like trees or buildings. It's a little bit off-putting, so the footage kind of looks like it has a posterized effect to it. So I'm kind of hoping that this is something that might be addressed in a firmware update, because in those times, that's when I think the Action 4 footage actually looks better than the Action 5. But again, you can check out my full comparison video between the Action 4 and the Action 5 Pro. The link is in the description. But in terms of the updated sensor, it also has 4K 60 high dynamic low light imaging. And there's a new super night setting for low light situations as well. So the super night setting is a new video mode, much like you've got the low light image video mode on the Pocket 3. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's just called low light video. And yeah, so you've got super night on the Osmo Action 5 Pro now. And with the Super Night mode, DJI recommends that it's best used when your light levels are really, really low. So times when there isn't much artificial light lighting the scene. Otherwise, the updated sensor with low light dynamic imaging should handle low light situations well enough that have adequate lighting. Now, when it comes to the color profiles, in addition to having the normal color profile and the D-Log M color profile, which allows you to shoot flat and then color grade the footage later on, there's also a color profile that the Osmo Pocket 3 has in addition to it as well. And that's HLG, which allows you to shoot HLG 10 bit. But in terms of the normal color profile, there are two options for this now, an 8-bit option and a 10-bit option. So there is another video mode that is completely new to the Osmo Action 5 Pro, and that is subject tracking. And while it's not the exact same as the tracking feature of the Osmo Pocket 3, because obviously the Pocket 3 has a gimbal, the subject tracking mode in the Action 5 Pro drops the resolution down to 2.7K so that it can use the whole sensor to move the frame around to keep the subject in the center of the frame. And according to DJI, this mode is best used for times when you're holding the camera and you're moving around quite a bit. So for example, if you were skiing or snowboarding or you were on a motorcycle and it was mounted to the bike. So anything where you'd wanna try and keep yourself in the center because there's a little bit of movement going on. So the feature that I 
alluded to earlier where I said it was something that enhances what the Action 4 has and it's something that a lot of people I think will find extremely useful is a feature that the Osmo Pocket 3 has as well and it's in relation to the audio. If you film with someone else or you want to do an interview and get clean audio from both people then with the As Action 4 you would have had to plug in the receiver so that you could have two transmitters connected to the camera because with the direct Bluetooth connection it only supports one mic to transmitter. But just like the Osmo Pocket 3, the Osmo Action 5 Pro supports the ability to connect two DJI mic 2 transmitters via direct Bluetooth connection so there's really no need to have a receiver anymore whatsoever. But there's one new addition too, which isn't exclusive to the Action 5 Pro, but it's a really nice new accessory to have and be able to use. Before I get onto that though, it is worth mentioning that the Osmo Action 5 Pro now has extended battery life with its larger capacity sized batteries. I believe it's something like up to four hours extended battery life. Of course, this is really going to vary depending on how you use the camera, what settings you use and various other variables as well. But I can definitely say that I've been getting more juice than when I was using my Action 4. Again, you can watch the comparison video via the link in the description. But in addition to these new batteries, DJI has a multifunctional charging handle which also lets you control the Action 5 Pro with the record button, as well as using the custom modes button and the quick shots button. With the handle, you don't even have to have a battery in the camera, you can completely use it without. And I haven't fully tested this to know just how much juice it provides, but I've been out all day with it, no battery in the camera, and I have had plenty of juice left in the handle for filming for another full day. So if you're a vlogger, I think those were the main new features and specs that were worth highlighting. But if you really are wondering how the Osmo Action 4 compares to the Osmo Action 5 Pro in terms of video quality, whether it's on a bright sunny day or whether it's in low light situations, then I suggest watching this video next. <laughs>